What's up everybody, we're back again with another episode with Ope, and if you're watching this, you wanna know my top two things for any homeowner, regardless of experience level, that they can do to make their lawn go from point A to point B by the end of this year and to set them up for success in future years. And be sure to stay to the end while I give a bonus tip on another layer of one additional thing that you can do that's very, very easy to even supplement that even further. Let's take a look. So here you are looking to take your lawn care journey to the next level. You're at point A and you want to get to point B and you just need a little bit of help getting there. Well, I'm going to give you my top two things that anybody can do, any homeowner, anyone who's taking care of a lawn, to take their lawn care game from point A to point B and take it to the next level that I think everybody should master first before moving on to the next thing. And before we get into it, I just want to set expectations for anyone watching this. Lawn care is not an area where you're going to receive much instant gratification. I learned this very very early on it is a long term play it is a long term hobby and it is something that unfortunately just can't happen overnight however I will also say that these top two things, if you're not doing them now, and if you implement them and actually take care of your lawn the way I'm about to tell you, you can dramatically increase the overall health and look and appearance of your lawn almost overnight in basically about a couple months, maybe a couple weeks, but for sure by the end of the season and setting yourself up for years to come. So without further ado, let's dive right on into it. The very first thing that I think anyone should master is lawn mowing. And that might seem kind of silly because we need to mow the lawn and everyone does that. And yes, of course, that 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 is the case, but we need to take it a couple layers deeper to understand how to actually perfect this to make your lawn look nicer, have a healthier balance in your lawn, and ultimately just have a more healthy lawn going into future seasons. The very first one is knowing when your lawn needs to be mowed and how to identify this. We're going to know exactly when the grass is telling us that it needs to be mowed thanks to the one-third rule. And effectively, all of this means is at any given point in the time when we have our grass blade, it means that we're not going to cut any more than the top one-third of that grass blade off in a single mow. If we do that, it stresses the grass blade out, it exposes it, and makes it prone to different diseases in the future that we just don't want to deal with, making your lawn susceptible to things that we, of course, Will make it unhealthy. I'll be candid in saying this, the one-third rule can sometimes be very difficult to keep up with, especially in the heart of that spring and fall uh, growth seasons in a cool season lawn. If you can at all costs follow this as much as humanly possible, you will be in a tremendously different spot even in just a couple weeks, a couple months specifically by the end of the year going into next than if you were to just let it grow out and hacking it down once a week, once every other week. So if you're in that boat, that's a very, very simple fix. The second layer to mastering lawn mowing is sharpening your mower blades. And if we're looking at a standard rotary mower, that mower blade will go over the grass, pick it up with suction, and cut it with the blade. If this blade is dull, as you can kind of see here, you're gonna leave a jagged edge on the blade of the grass, leaving it susceptible to diseases in the future, stressing it out regardless of the height of cut that you're at and where you were. But then it also leaves a very fine brown tip at the very top of it, so so your lawn doesn't actually look as green as it probably could. So when do we know when to sharpen our blades? Well, it kind of depends on how much you mow, and if you're doing everything we just said, the general rule of thumb that I've followed is anytime after 20 to 25 hours of physically lawn mowing, that will be kind of that time to go and sharpen your blades. I know people who do it a lot more than that. I also know people who wait years to do this. But at the same time, we want to be conscious of what our blade sharpness is, what it looks like, and really just making sure that it doesn't look like this, because that is what is going to cause you some trouble. The third layer, and probably the easiest of the three, is alternating mowing patterns. And this seems like a very simple fix, but I know plenty of homeowners, and I, I can assure you that if you're watching this, you've definitely done this before, where you just mow in the same pattern, going over the same stripe, same direction, every single time. And not only is that damaging to the grass, and if you think about it, you're, you're mowing the, the lawn over and, and folding that grass blade over and training that grass blade to sit like this every single time. So you've got grass blades sitting like this, and you've got grass blades sitting like this, and we're not training it to do what it's designed to do, which is grow straight up. So changing the direction in which you mow and the patterns, for example, if you mow north-south for a couple times, change it to east-west for a couple times, and then if you wanted to get even more into that, you can go diagonal, you can change up your patterns, but what that does is it forces the lawn to train itself to actually grow in the way that it should and get used 
used to different directions based upon the suction, the cut, and the direction that your mower is actually pushing it in. So to recap on the first point, mowing, one third rule, sharpening your blades and changing the mowing pattern in the direction in which you mow. If you're not currently doing any of those things, those three things will change dramatically how your lawn looks and the health of your lawn moving forward if you're not doing anything else. My second tip for getting a homeowner to take their lawn care game to the next level is mastering their irrigation. And this is still something after years and years and years of doing this, I'm still trying to master myself because every year, every week, every month is kind of different depending on what season you're at, what your weather pattern's at, what your location's at, and really just what your needs are for your lawn. So mastering irrigation, the first thing that I'm gonna say is that there's two populations watching this. You either have an in-ground irrigation system or you don't. And then and you're in that bucket, you've got a whole bunch of different options, either not irrigating at all, letting rain kind of do its thing, you have a DIY system, or you can kind of just get out there with the hose. I'm gonna make this very generic, so all and everybody, a part of both of those buckets can take advantage of these simple tips and get their lawn to the next level. So the very first layer of irrigation is understanding how much water we actually need. And generally speaking, a average cool season lawn will need no more than an inch to an inch and a half of water per week. And that obviously can change depending on your time of year, your drought conditions, how much rainfall you've had, etc. The second layer underneath that is now understanding how much rain naturally comes to us by way of rainfall. So there is one tool that I recommend anybody get that's watching this, and that is a rain gauge of some kind in your lawn. And that will tell you exactly how much rain has fallen per event at your actual location. The next step is to understand how much water we actually need to get to an inch to an inch and a half after the rainfall. I have a link down in the description off to a blog that we completed at the lawn feed that goes through all of this. I won't cover that here, but you would simply take inch and an inch and a half of water, depending on what you want, subtract how much rainfall has come, and then you figure out how much you actually need to water based upon that. Once you've figured out all of that, I recommend going deep and infrequent in your watering schedules. What does that mean? That means you're gonna water a large amount of water, most of that inch, inch and a half, in one or two events, versus watering every single day and dividing that by seven days and just going from there. If you go deep and infrequent in a watering cadence, you're gonna train your root system underground to drive into the soil and find moisture when it's seeking it and growing down and deep which is what we want in a root system. And that leaves me with my final bonus tip. And no, I have not forgotten about this, so here it is. My bonus tip for any homeowner looking to take their lawn care game to the next level is finding a fertilizer program that is right for your lawn. Not a generalized program, not something that works for someone else, but what works for you. And the only way that you're gonna be able to do this is with a simple soil test. They're very cheap, I'll have them linked down below order one and plan on performing this at the beginning of each year. If you haven't done anything with your lawn, you can do this now. Just make sure you haven't applied any fertilizer in the previous 60 days because that will affect the results. But what the soil test will tell you is exactly the nutrients that your lawn is telling you it needs that you can go and apply to your lawn and pair it with everything we've just mentioned and see a grand success and a grand change even in a couple months, definitely by, the, by this time next year if you go and do this. Once you get your soil test results back, pair it with the fertilizer that matches up with the needs of the soil test. I have a whole blog linked down below that will tell you exactly how to do this, how much fertilizer you're gonna need per application, per season to really help you out with success here. That is my bonus tip. Don't just go what's on the shelves. Don't just go what's on sale. Find the thing that's best for you. And there you have it. You've got my top two tips for any homeowner, regardless of experience, level to go take their lawn from point A to point B, plus a bonus tip at the end to really add that subset layer and supplement everything that we just mentioned. Thank you so much for watching this. Be sure to like it if you found it helpful and please subscribe. I do so much appreciate that. So you can keep in the know of everything that's coming down the line to you from my channel. And as for me, I need to get outside of my lawn, start mowing to follow that one third rule. And I will be back with you on the next episode. You guys be good and take care.